For five years, I harbored a secret love for Li Muxiao. Finally, I found the opportunity to climb into his bed. When he woke up, he took me directly to register for marriage. But he couldn't call out my name. The civil affairs office was deserted on Monday morning, just as the social news had suggested. Nowadays, the marriage rate was indeed frighteningly low. This highlighted the preciousness of my relationship with Li Muxiao. The staff's eyes lit up as they quickly produced the registration form and enthusiastically explained how to fill it out. Blessings and praises for our perfect match and beautiful appearances were incessant. Until Li Muxiao turned to me and asked, Name, age, marital history? His voice was calm and plain, merely an innocent inquiry. In the eerie silence, I awkwardly took the pen from his hand. Let me fill it out myself. In the next moment, he snatched it back. I saw your handwriting just now, it's not very good. I covered half of my face, quietly answering the various questions on the registration form. I intentionally spoke quickly, but he didn't miss a single word. Midway through, he glanced at me, seeming to reprimand yet also revel in something, a faint curve forming at the corner of his lips. Li Muxiao's mood was not bad, at least much better than when he woke up in the hotel this morning. This realization relieved the tension I had been carrying, followed by a surge of intense bitterness. It felt like finally grasping a treasure coveted for years, with an incredulous yet possessive and uncertain feeling. Of course, there was also joy. This was Li Muxiao, the man who captured my heart at first sight, the one I silently loved for five years. But in his eyes, I was just a scheming female employee who took advantage of an opportunity to climb into his bed. Last night, Li Muxiao entertained the delegation from the Shun Group on behalf of the company. This was originally the responsibility of the PR department, but as the cooperation with the Shun Group was about to expire without a smooth renewal, he had to step in personally. Because apart from being the deputy general manager, he was also the young master of the group. This implication changed everything. Mr. Shun accompanied his rarely seen daughter, Shun Iran, to the banquet. Everyone knew that the Shun family's intentions weren't about the wine, but about Li Muxiao. Shun Iran was beautiful, with a charming figure and captivating eyes that kept Li Muxiao firmly within her gaze. As I observed from the sidelines, I couldn't help but recall the rumors about Shun Iran in our circle. The only daughter of the Shun family, beautiful, eccentric, domineering, and capricious, until she met Li Muxiao and fell in love at first sight. She put away her wildness and pursued him earnestly, but only encountered rejection, even resorting to hunger strikes at one point. Mr. Shun had also dropped hints to Li Muxiao several times, but he always played dumb. Helpless, they could only turn to business matters, hoping to force Li Muxiao into compliance through cooperation. Although it was a low tactic, it was effective. Li Muxiao couldn't dodge it anymore and could only tolerate Shun Iran's constant presence, occasionally responding with polite but distant smiles. As I lowered my head, his sharp jawline tightened and his lips pursed slightly, showing clear impatience. Because I had been watching him closely, I noticed Shun Iran discreetly tampering with his drink. When he became groggy and was half dragged, half hugged out of the venue, I quickly rushed over to intervene. My prepared excuse was blatantly ignored, and Shun Iran's eyes flashed with malice, as if she had decided to forcefully take Li Muxiao away. In desperation, I could only tightly embrace Li Muxiao and, in the heat of the moment, pinched his waist. The pain sobered him up slightly, and his gaze shifted between me and Shun Iran. Soon, he understood and turned to embrace me, saying, Take me away. The scorching breath felt like flames licking at the wild grass that had grown in my heart for years, igniting a blaze that spread throughout my body. Even as I helped him into the room and left a note for him at the front desk before forcing myself to leave quickly, my limbs still felt weak and numb. Just as I took a step outside the hotel door, I suddenly stopped in my tracks. The buried desire, like the ashes after a fire, reignited with the night breeze. I turned back determined to become a despicable and shameless person. Li Muxiao wasn't so drunk that he couldn't understand my intention to leave and return. There was a heavy mockery in his eyes, whether directed at my pretense or his own foolishness, I couldn't tell. In any case, 
His resistance could be ignored, but his anger was evident. He tossed and turned, tormenting me throughout the night. Every mark seemed to say, you brought this upon yourself. Pain and heat alternated, tears silently streamed down. I bit down on his shoulder, feeling like a small boat floating in the sea, tossed up and down. When the alarm clock woke me up the next day, the light outside the window was already bright. Li Muxiao, with a cold expression, dressed himself, repeatedly adjusting his tie with visible irritation. I walked over. Mr. Li, let me help. He glanced at me, leaning forward slightly, revealing a kiss mark on his neck, making my face flush with embarrassment, and my hand tightened around his waist. You want to strangle me so no one knows what you did last night? I quickly loosened his tie, stammering, you did too. Huh, I can tell, you're one who talks big but acts timid, a typical tiger in sheep's clothing. Mr. Li, you're too kind. After tidying up, Li Muxiao descended the stairs ahead of me. As he passed by the front desk, he was stopped by someone. Ah, uh, the note. I hurried over to intercept, but I was too late. Hey handsome, remember to protect yourself outside, and oh, remember to drink a glass of honey water in the morning from a kind-hearted Samaritan. Li Muxiao shook the note off. Kind-hearted Samaritan, isn't this a case of the pot calling the kettle black? I chuckled awkwardly. Mr. Li is absolutely right. He expressionlessly crumpled the note, and just when I thought he would throw it in the trash, he casually stuffed it into his pocket. Where do you live? Huh? Mr. Li, even if you want to fire me, you should let me go back to the company first to collect my personal belongings. Go back and get your household registration book. We're getting married. After leaving the civil affairs office, Li Muxiao took me straight to the company. I had only asked for a two-hour leave, and this was the first time he was late. Meticulous, rigid, and cold, these obvious traits represented that he was not an impulsive person. So why did he marry me? Was it out of obligation, or to use me as his shield? I was more inclined to the latter. Oddly enough, this relieved me. At least, I was useful to him. And I could gain certain exchanges. Indeed, Li Muxiao hit the brakes at a red light intersection. What do you want? Just say it. I don't need anything at the moment. I'll ask for Mr. Li's help when I need it. Okay, but let's change how you address me to avoid any misunderstandings. Sure, husband. Li Muxiao glanced at me swiftly. Hmm, he responded. Half an hour later, the car entered the underground parking lot of the company. Li Muxiao and I got out of the car one after the other. When we met again in the conference room, he sat at the head while I sat at the end. The images on the PPT kept changing, casting light and shadow on his face. I greedily watched, suddenly recalling the winter night when I first saw him. It was during the New Year's Eve party in my sophomore year. Laughter and music filled the air, but I was alone backstage, organizing props and costumes. Due to medication I took for an illness in high school, I had involuntarily gained weight. Despite extreme dieting, my weight had once exceeded 200 pounds. The weight gain had caused immense physical and psychological burden. I became sensitive and insecure. I couldn't participate in the artistic performances in my class, so I took up this backstage job. But I couldn't resist the temptation to peek, so I lifted the curtain to sneak a look. The next moment, I met Li Muxiao's eyes. His light-colored eyes, enhanced by the colored contacts, gleamed like gems, complementing his noble and cold demeanor. He was cosplaying as Seso Maru, the character I admired the most from the Japanese anime Inuyasha. He was visibly startled by my presence, pausing momentarily before continuing his performance as if nothing had happened. Leaving me alone in the cramped corner, my heart surged with excitement. Both thrilled and afraid, I hastily retreated, regretting not taking a longer look. Distracted, I accidentally tilted the props I was holding, but a hand reached out from the side to steady them. Be careful. Li Muxiao, after coming off stage, still had a cold demeanor, his voice very low, showing no emotion. But I couldn't help but fantasize about how nice it would be if he called my name. That was the beginning of my secret admiration. I probed discreetly and found out his identity, realizing how unattainable he was. 
He was like the moonlight that occasionally illuminated my path, but could never be touched. I could only admire and treasure him from afar. A year passed in a flash, and I had only seen him four times, each time being stopped by girls confessing their love. The first three times were all forcefully rejected, but the last time, he remained silent unexpectedly, and the girl flashed a confident smile. She was my roommate, the school's beauty, Chin Shi. She was known for her high-profile pursuits and her mastery of ambiguous relationships. But when she encountered Li Muxiao, a hard nut to crack, she was left frustrated. Later, I somehow got hold of one of his social media accounts, which was very obscure. Before figuring out the rules, I gave up hastily. I secretly took the account and tried repeatedly until I finally added Li Muxiao as a friend. He was as aloof online as he was in real life, but with the anonymity of the internet, I became braver and initiated conversations with him, day after day. Gradually, we became familiar with each other and miraculously found out that we had many common interests. It was like two lonely souls finally finding kindred spirits, resonating in the quiet night. That was the most conflicted time of my life. The joy was real but stolen, often dreaming of being exposed, waking up drenched in cold sweat, and continuing to deceive myself and others. Round and round, unable to save myself. Especially as I fell deeper into Li Muxiao's increasingly gentle demeanor, torn between sweetness and nervousness. When he suggested meeting, the sword hanging over my head finally fell. After struggling for days, I decided to keep the appointment. Even though I foresaw the worst outcome, I still chose the most beautiful dress. Unfortunately, just before leaving, Chan Shi discovered our chat records. She looked at me with surprise and mockery. You took the account that I didn't want? You're secretly in love with Li Muxiao? That's not surprising, but you don't think he'll like you, do you? I felt like I had been stripped bare, freezing cold in broad daylight, standing there numbly, clenching my fists. It wasn't until Chen, she went to meet Li Muxiao on my behalf that I realized my palms were already covered in bloodstains. It was the hidden love and deep resentment I had endured. Ignoring my roommate's dissuasion, I chased after them. When I arrived at the agreed location, Chen Shi was already sitting opposite Li Muxiao. As he handed her a handkerchief, his eyes were filled with unmistakable joy. At that moment, I suddenly understood. The truth didn't matter at all. Li Muxiao hoped that person was Qin Shi. Wan Qingji, the meeting is over. My distant memories were interrupted, and my supervisor looked at me with displeasure. Mr. Li personally chaired the meeting, and you dare to slack off. I panicked and came to my senses, knocking over the water glass in front of me, creating a mess. Li Muxiao walked out without glancing sideways, casting a chilly glance at me before leaving hastily, not waiting for me to squeeze out a smile. He didn't seem like a newlywed husband at all, still the ruthless capitalist. I pursed my lips, silently cursing, and was called into the office by the supervisor. The project leader from Shun Group called this morning, saying they hope you will be in charge of the proposal for this collaboration. I've already agreed. Shaowan, you've been with the company for over two years, always diligent but low-key. What you lack is an opportunity. This time you must seize it, don't be afraid, go for it, and if you have any problems, feel free to ask me. The supervisor rattled off instructions, not giving me a chance to interrupt, so naturally, I couldn't refuse. And most likely, this was orchestrated by Shinny Ran, so it wouldn't be easy. I sighed, took the documents, and returned to my desk, only to find a box of sandwiches on it. I looked around but didn't see any suspicious individuals. Even Xiao He, who pursued me, was busy working. So, I tentatively sent a WeChat message to Li Muxiao. He had just added me as a friend in the morning, and our only conversation was still pinned at the top of the chat box. Is this breakfast from you? Li Muxiao quickly replied. What? Do you have other suitors? Turns out, it was really from him. The next second, my phone vibrated twice. Of course not. I meant to say that I am your suitor. I chuckled lightly and replied, Got it, no misunderstandings, thank you. Then, I changed his WeChat name to Feeder. I didn't ask him to feed me delicacies or grant me wealth and glory. I just wanted a bit of sincerity and tenderness from him.
Before leaving work, I received a call from Li Muxiao, saying he would help me move in the evening. Isn't this too sudden? We don't have to live together immediately, do we? Do you want to wait until my parents find out that I'm married but separated from my wife before we move in? My heart tightened. Are you going to tell them? Not for now, but it's not a big deal. The key point is that I'm married now, so things can't remain the same as before. This is an objective change that must be reflected. Otherwise, marriage will lose its meaning. Li Muxiao's tone was serious, sounding like negotiation but also like preaching, making me unable to suppress a laugh. Wan Qingji, are you laughing at me? I dare not, I'm just happy. Then why were you acting so reserved just now? You were quite enthusiastic last night. The man's ambiguous tone ended in my swift hang-up, but the warmth in his words lingered in my chest. When I got into Li Muxiao's car, that warmth spread to my face again, and it seemed to intensify. He glanced at me, then rolled down the window and drove me to the rental house. It was the one I rented when I first found a job, old and small. But because it carried my dreams of entering the workplace and my pride in independence, I had meticulously decorated it. From the bedding to the sofa, from household appliances to kitchenware, I touched one item after another, unwilling to leave any behind. I smiled at Li Muxiao, anyone would think you want to leave them here to suffer. I want to take everything with me. No, you can only choose one of each category. My home has everything. Your home must be very spacious. But the space available for you to use is not large. Sorry, I'm still not used to having too many strangers and things encroach on my space. Moreover, if we divorce in the future, you'll have to move everything out piece by piece, which would be more troublesome then. His calm tone sounded natural, but it felt like a bucket of cold water dousing me from head to toe. It was the first time I hated his honesty so much, making my hopeful anticipation seem so ridiculous. I didn't make any more requests. I simply packed some clothes and daily necessities, picked up the dolphin plush toy from the bedside, and followed Li Muxiao home. He lived in a high-end apartment in the city center, with a good location, spacious layout, and exquisite decoration. But it lacked some warmth, as the kitchen countertop was empty, indicating that it wasn't used for cooking on a regular basis. Li Muxiao led me to the guest room, which had the same cold and plain style as him, even the curtains were dull. Previously, I might have offered some suggestions, but not now. I just smiled and said everything was fine. After instructing me on a few matters, he returned to his study. I neatly placed the clothes I brought in the corner of the wardrobe and put the dolphin pillow on the bedside where I slept. It was a souvenir I received at the company's annual meeting during my first year. Originally, I had won a second prize, a high-end double-door refrigerator. But because the souvenir came with a subsidy benefit, personally sent by Li Muxiao, I voluntarily exchanged it with someone else. When I received the plush toy from him, it felt like there was electricity in his fingertips, making me almost want to cry. All the days and nights I had worked tirelessly to get close to him seemed to have paid off. Even if he didn't know me, in that second of eye contact, his eyes were only on me. Now, unexpectedly, I had become his legal wife. Living in his house, being added to his household registration in the future, and even in the event of a divorce, I could still get a share of the money he earned with his own hands. Everything far exceeded my expectations, and I should have been happy. But my heart was empty, and I could only console myself that at least there was only a wall separating us for now. But in reality, it didn't help at all. When I took a shower, I didn't know how to adjust the hot water switch in the bathroom, so I gritted my teeth and took a cold shower without asking for his help. Objectively speaking, Li Muxiao was a great cohabitant. Generous, tidy, quiet, respectful of privacy, and even willing to help with household chores. But the flip side of these qualities was indifference, lack of attention, and clear boundaries. I understood him and naturally followed his rules. I made breakfast and dinner every day, but ate separately from him, trying to avoid facing him at the dinner table. We washed our clothes separately. He usually sent his to the laundry service, while I washed my underwear myself. I helped him hang up clothes twice when he was busy on the phone, and he awkwardly thanked me. After that, I didn't touch them again. The living room was a common area, and I watched TV at night while he worked in the study. 
He asked me to help pour water twice and treated me to an expensive meal on the weekend. In short, we got along harmoniously but were not intimate. Our eating preferences were somewhat similar and we occasionally exchanged a few jokes. But he never asked if I was comfortable living there and I still didn't consult him about adjusting the hot water switch. As a result of my stubbornness, I ended up with a fever. Li Muxiao was the one who noticed. After dinner, when he had some rare free time, he suggested watching a movie together. At that time, I already felt dizzy and weak, but I thought it was just fatigue. The cooperation project with Shen's company had exhausted me. I had been working overtime continuously, and the proposal had been rejected twice. The latest version was still pending, most likely to be rejected again. Shuni Ran was obviously waiting for me to apologize to her, but I was unwilling to compromise, so I treated it as a test. I also didn't want to miss the opportunity to be alone with Li Muxiao, so I agreed. But halfway through the movie, I couldn't hold on. The words on the screen were blurry, and closing my eyes made my headache worse. In a daze, a slightly cool hand landed on my forehead, easing my feverishness, and I instinctively leaned into it. Accompanied by a helpless yet teasing voice, I was lifted up. Even when you're delirious with a fever, you haven't forgotten to take advantage of me. Truly unchanged. I half-heartedly retorted, I haven't. The culprit has no right to accuse me. Blaming me again? Not blaming you. Blaming your fancy shower switch. I don't know how to use it. It won't give me hot water. Li Muxiao paused in his steps, his muscles gradually tensing. After laying me down on the bed, he leaned in, puzzled and annoyed. Why didn't you ask me then? Are you deliberately playing the victim or trying to make me the bad guy? I'm just staying in my own lane. I know I'm just a temporary resident here. Nothing in this house belongs to me, and neither do you. So I dare not touch or ask about anything. The physical pain magnified my hidden vulnerability, and I suddenly burst into tears, unleashing all the accumulated grievances and unwillingness. Will you pay attention to me if I play the victim? Will you feel guilty if you think you're the bad guy? Probably not, because you've been blaming me from the beginning. But I never asked you to take responsibility. You initiated the marriage, so why do you treat me like this? My voice gradually faded into a hoarse sob, and Li Muxiao held me close again, still silent. But the hand on my back became heavy and then light, gradually patting me gently, and as I was about to drift into unconsciousness, I heard a low sigh. I'm sorry. That night was long, long enough for me to repeatedly recall the past, reliving years of bitterness and waiting, crying out loud in my dreams. Someone embraced me, intermittently patting and comforting me. The fingertips wiping away my tears had a slight callus, carrying a hazy tenderness and heartache. Across the distant years, the late comfort reached my anxious heart. I couldn't help but draw closer, longing for countless scenes to become reality as dawn approached. Li Muxiao lay beside me, sound asleep, one hand resting on my waist, the other still holding a cool towel. I blinked, suddenly lowering my head to look at myself under the covers. All my clothes had been changed, even my underwear was gone. This was too considerate. Feeling my body temperature rising, I cautiously moved away, prompting Li Muxiao to instinctively pull me closer, his lips touching my forehead. Are you feverish again? He started to get up, but I stopped him. I'm not feverish anymore, I just turned over in bed. Let's go back to sleep. Seemingly exhausted, Li Muxiao hummed and drifted back to sleep. Leaving me alone in the silent room, I felt a mixture of sweetness and confusion, followed by endless melancholy. This version of Li Muxiao was as warm and beautiful as a dream, disappearing upon waking. I didn't want that, but I had no other choice. I picked up my phone, gently leaning against his shoulder, and took our first photo together. Then I uploaded it to my secret base. It was actually the account blog of a niche social app one used to chat with Li Muxiao in college. After he and Chen Shi started dating, he never logged into this app again, probably at Chen Shi's insistence. So it became my exclusive refuge, and I named it Mercury Chronicles. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, confined to its own orbit, silently gazing and brushing past, yet never able to get closer to the sun. 
just like me to Li Muxiao. Here, I recorded, expressed and yearned, but also felt lost, sad, and remembered. Trying to reconcile with time, with myself, and bid farewell to Li Muxiao. Apart from words, there weren't many photos inside, all about Li Muxiao, but none taken by me. Now, finally, there was one. Even if we were to part ways in the future, at least we had left a trace in each other's memories. I greedily stared at the photo, gradually falling asleep again. When I woke up, I heard the sound of something heavy falling, accompanied by Li Muxiao's muffled curses. What was he doing outside? Stretching my sore body, I sat up, feeling much better, and walked out. Li Muxiao was in the kitchen, holding a knife and cutting a pumpkin. It was a big one, probably the one that had fallen earlier. Are you making porridge? Let me do it. I rolled up my sleeves and approached, but Li Muxiao stopped me, placing his hand, damp with cold water, on my forehead, then quickly pulling it away. I asked for leave for you from your supervisor. Go back to bed for a while. I'll bring the porridge to you when it's ready. You asked for leave for me? Then, she won't know about us. It's okay, she won't dare to say anything. Li Muxiao picked up the knife again, and his voice became a bit hoarse as he turned away. And I never said it couldn't be public. I was slightly stunned, unable to help but purse my lips. You're the boss, so you decide. But, let me cook the porridge. I don't want to have a fever and diarrhea right after recovering. Li Muxiao's expression showed a momentary embarrassment, then he cleared his throat. You can teach me. I'm very smart. I know that. If there's a chance. If I could stay by your side in the future, I'd be ecstatic. But I didn't say it out loud, just skillfully lit the stove and started cooking the porridge. I also made two refreshing side dishes and fried two egg pancakes. Li Muxiao didn't leave either, just helped me wash the used dishes beside me, looking awkward and restrained. That was very unlike him. Do you have something else to say? Just heard from your supervisor. Shun's company deliberately made things difficult for you in the cooperation project. Why didn't you tell me? This is my job and I can handle it myself. But you were targeted by Shin Iran because of me and we're married. Surprised, right? Finding out that I'm not what you thought, feeling like you misunderstood me, so you want to make up for it with these things? But actually, it's not necessary. I've never needed these. I didn't want to say much more, quickly scooped the porridge into bowls, ready to take them to the dining room. As I turned around, a sudden dizziness hit me, and my fingers lost their grip, causing the bowl to fall to the ground. The hot porridge splashed onto my bare ankles, instantly turning them red. I winced in pain, and Li Muxiao quickly scooped me up and hurried to the living room. As he was about to put me on the sofa, the sound of unlocking the door suddenly came from the entrance. Li Muxiao looked over, and his gaze met the eyes of two elderly people walking in calmly. He froze in place, even forgetting to put me down. Dad, Mom, why are you here? Li's father was even more surprised than him. After scanning his eyes between him and me several times, he slammed the cane in his hand fiercely on the ground. So this is why you didn't agree to the Shin family? You're bewitched by this little vixen, skipping work and messing around at home early in the morning. I blinked. Although the words were vulgar, could they be understood as implying that I was prettier than Shiniran? Over the years, besides studying hard, I had also desperately tried to lose weight, sculpt my body, learn makeup, and practice body language. I had exhausted all methods and energy to make myself outstanding. Eventually, I succeeded in transforming myself, but only in appearance. My inner self seemed to still linger in the insecure state of my 20s. It wasn't until more and more suitors appeared that I reluctantly believed in my beauty. But after those people quickly gave up pursuing me due to my rejection, I lamented that apart from my appearance, I lacked any inner charm. No one truly loved me for who I was, which once made me feel desperate. Just like now, although I was in Li Muxiao's arms, I still didn't have the qualification to refute the contempt from his father. Dad, watch your words. This is my new wife and everything we do is legal. Moreover, it seems like you don't have the right to criticize me. Even if I mess around, I inherited it from you. Li Muxiao was obviously angry, his neck veins slightly protruding. 
He wanted to continue speaking, but abruptly stopped when he saw the bleak expression on Lee's mother's face. Lee's father's romantic history was no secret in the circle. I had heard about it in college. At that time, Lee Muxiao had fallen out with his father because of this, refusing to go home or take money from the family. He worked part-time to pay for his tuition and living expenses. But even without his family background, he was still exceptionally outstanding, winning first-class scholarships every year and publishing his professional papers several times. Unfortunately, he didn't end up in the field he loved, but was forced to join the family company after his father suddenly had a stroke. Although he only held the position of vice president, Lee's father had long delegated authority to him, acting as a nominal chairman and rarely going to the company. The two had many differences in their management philosophy, but Lee's father was determined about his marriage to Sean Iran, seemingly insisting on it. To stabilize the cooperation and build a flagship business across industries, marriage was the easiest and most effective method. Therefore, he turned a blind eye to Sean Iran's antics and, naturally, didn't have a good attitude towards me. You don't have to keep holding her, aren't you tired? Put her down. Li Muxiao snorted and suddenly kissed me on the face with a loud sound. I'm not tired, I'm happy. The atmosphere became both eerie and awkward for a moment. My cheeks flushed, and I quickly tugged on Li Muxiao's sleeve. Quick, put me down. Or go get some medicine for me. My foot still hurts. Oh right, almost forgot. Hold on a bit, I'll be right back. Li Muxiao set me down and went to the cabinet to find the first aid kit, leaving me facing the two elderly people. Lee's mother asked me some personal questions, and upon learning that I also worked at the company, Lee's father warned me not to bully others. After a few words of reprimand from Li Muxiao, Lee's father left in a huff, looking like a mother hen protecting her chick. I couldn't help but laugh, my foot trembling. Li Muxiao grabbed it and gently applied the medicine, making it feel both itchy and numb. Why are your feet so small, not much bigger than my palm? Maybe I didn't wear socks this morning. That's not it. Last time at the hotel, you wore socks, and it didn't make much difference. I could tell when I touched them. Well, straight guys are something else. Two sentences turned the atmosphere from ambiguous to suffocating. If I had known, I should have just steamed the pumpkin earlier to shut him up. Caught a cold plus a foot injury, I stayed home for two more days, with Li Muxiao accompanying me. We didn't talk much, nor did we deliberately do anything, but he seemed to be paying attention to my every move, always appearing promptly when I needed him. He even suggested helping me take a bath and personally teaching me how to use the hot water switch. I declined. Being drunk or acting impulsively might be forgivable, but it's really hard to be naked in front of someone while sober. But we did become much closer, starting with sharing the same bed. Li Muxiao said sleeping together would make it easier for him to take care of me, which was undeniable and something I had been looking forward to. However, when he lifted the blanket and lay down beside me, with the cold scent of shower gel, I only felt the urge to escape. Sadly, I thought it would have been better to remain feverish and drowsy, enjoying the embrace without feeling embarrassed or uneasy. Li Muxiao was completely unaware of the turmoil in my heart, he was distracted by a dolphin plush toy. Do you like dolphins? Not really, I just like this plush toy. It's a souvenir I got at the company's annual meeting. Is our company that tacky? No, this year I'll make sure it's grand. By the way, how's your luck? I chuckled. Not bad. Isn't it said that when the tree falls, the monkeys scatter? Li Muxiao chuckled too. Actually, it doesn't matter. Anyway, you have Mr. Lee, and you'll get the first prize. What prize? Whatever you want. Can it be something related to you? Sure. I knew Li Muxiao was doing all this mostly out of a man's a sense of responsibility for his husband's role. While it made me satisfied, it also made me feel more regretful. He was truly a good person, but I couldn't truly possess this goodness. The excitement cooled down in an instant. I sighed despondently, but Li Muxiao thought I hadn't rested enough. How about taking two more days off tomorrow? No, the chairman probably called and scolded you today, right? He did, for not going to the company, but it's not just that. Seeing Li Muxiao hesitate, I didn't ask further. But for some reason, 
He tossed and turned all night. The next day, as soon as I drove into the parking lot, I saw Chairman Lee, who was on time to catch someone, apparently had something to say. I couldn't afford to listen, so I made an excuse and left. After walking quite far away, I sneakily looked back, only to meet Lee Mu Xiao's eyes. He seemed stunned, as if he hadn't expected me to turn back, yet also as if he had been waiting for me to do so. Then, he smiled faintly, like a leaf gently falling into the lake of my heart, creating ripples that resounded deafeningly. It took me a long time to realize that it was the most intense surge of affection I had ever felt for Li Muxiao in the desolate emptiness. At that moment, I didn't anticipate that it would be the final scene of my love. During these two days off at home, I was an idol. I upgraded the cooperative project once again. My supervisor thought it was excellent and asked me to rehearse the presentation, with my colleagues simulating questions that Shin's company might ask. I connected my computer to the projector, opened the document, and a WeChat message suddenly popped up on the screen. With the phone ringing, I realized I forgot to log out of WeChat. Li Muxiao. My dad kept nagging until just now, urging us to have a child as soon as possible. The quiet conference room was suddenly filled with excitement and gossip, interrupting the sound of typing on keyboards. Shower Wan, when did you start dating a boyfriend? What boyfriend? They're already having a child. They must be married, right? Oh my, they're married. Shower Wan, when are you hosting the wedding banquet? You must invite us to the wedding. The chatter overwhelmed my mind, and just as I was unsure how to explain, I suddenly heard a weak question. This WeChat profile picture looks familiar, is it Mr. Lee's? No. I shouted, feeling the supervisor's playful gaze on me, and feeling a bit weak. It's just a coincidence. Xiao He, from the corner, had a serious expression, but I did see Chairman Lee coming to the company just now. My heart trembled. I understood that he had already figured it out, but I could only grit my teeth and say, isn't it normal for the boss to come to the company? Everyone was skeptical, but they still started focusing on work under the supervisor's urging, except for Xiao He, who looked at me with a gloomy expression. As soon as we left the meeting room, he dragged me to the staircase. Wan Qingji, do you really have an affair with Mr. Li? I frowned and shook him off. It's none of your business. You know I like you, but I've rejected you three times. I've been giving you face, hoping you'd have some self-respect. Xiao He, embarrassed and angry, looked at me defiantly. You pretend to be virtuous and pure with me, but don't you still go after wealthy men? You think Mr. Li would marry you? When I went to the bathroom just now, I saw a gorgeous woman hugging Mr. Li with that figure and appearance. She's a hundred times better than you. I ignored his sarcasm, just pondering slowly. Did someone hug Li Muxiao? Did he push her away or did he not? Who could it be? Would he divorce me? Panic tightened my heart, but reason supported me from retreating. Otherwise, being caught by scum like Xiao, he would only lead to endless trouble. Do you think I really like Mr. Li? It's just mutual benefit. I got the project, didn't I? But you should think about it. After I become your team leader, will you still have it so easy? I'm despicable like that, but so what? I've gained everything. As for status, I don't care at all. But you're right about one thing. I only chase after wealthy people. I don't have any interest in poor guys like you. So don't bother me again, or I'll have Mr. Lee fire you. He's been listening to me obediently now. Xiao He was a despicable coward. Seeing me go mad, he backed off, cursing at me before leaving in embarrassment. As he left the staircase, a figure seemed to flash by the door, but when I opened it, there was no one there. Xiao He angrily returned to his workstation, typing on the keyboard, while I remained restless because of his words. Especially after hearing a colleague mention that the newly appointed market department director from Shun's company, who came to the meeting today, was stunningly beautiful and seemed to be acquainted with Li Muxiao, I couldn't sit still. I went to the pantry and brewed a cup of coffee, washed my face in the bathroom, and watered the green plants on the windowsill twice. When the supervisor returned from outside, he informed me that Li Muxiao would personally accompany the Shun's representative to the presentation, asking me to prepare early. He had already seen my plan at home, and he had always avoided Shun's company. 
Why would he suddenly take the initiative to accompany them? I was puzzled until I saw the person walking into the conference room behind Li Muxiao, Chan Shi. After so many years, she still shone brightly, and her mere presence took the male colleague's breath away. When her gaze fell on me, it felt like a thin thread entangled my throat. I breathed a sigh of relief only after she looked away. Li Muxiao's expression was indifferent. He had kept his eyes down since entering, and his conversation with Chun Shi was perfunctory. Unexpectedly, Shani Ran did not appear, most likely because she already knew about the past relationship between Chen Shi and Li Muxiao, and was using her to strike at me. My thoughts were in turmoil, and I had to clench my fists to focus, but even so, I stuttered twice during the presentation. After it ended, I couldn't help but look at Li Muxiao, only to meet his cold and distant gaze. Was he avoiding suspicion? Chan Shi clapped her hands. Great proposal. Mr. Li indeed has strong subordinates. Li Muxiao snorted, stood up, and left without looking at me again. My heart raced in panic. After packing up, I secretly followed him. However, at the corner, I heard Chen Shi's somewhat coquettish voice. After all these years, are you still mad at me? Director Chen, your abilities are outstanding, and Shun's company has been our longtime partner. I don't know where you heard such talk. The business discussion is over. I'm asking you now as your ex-girlfriend. In that case, there's no need to bring it up again. You left for your future back then, and now you've got what you wanted. That's enough. Chen, she smiled suggestively. The female employee who presented earlier, don't you think she's special? I don't think so. She's just an ordinary employee. But I heard from Shani Ran that there seems to be something between you and her. There's nothing. Don't casually associate her with me. Li Muxiao said impatiently, turning around to see me standing there dumbfounded, his eyes deepening and his face becoming even more grim. I instinctively took two steps back. Sorry, I was just passing by. I didn't hear anything. You can continue. As I ran out, the wind whistled past me, but it wasn't until I ran far away that I realized it was the sound of holes being pierced in my chest. I remembered Li Muxiao's warm palms, his kisses, his words about having him, and how he never asked to keep our relationship hidden. Back then, I was secretly delighted, looking forward to the day when I could stand openly with him. But now I realized it was just his insincere coaxing and charity. Encountering Chun, she made everything meaningless. Only I was still dreaming a distant dream, as foolish as my past self. Suddenly, I felt exhausted, even wishing I had never met Li Muxiao. Then I wouldn't have chased after his footsteps, working day and night, losing so much joy and missing so many sceneries, only to end up abandoned by him in the end. Footsteps hurried behind me. Li Muxiao caught up, grabbing my arm and turning me around. Wan Qingji, why are you running? Didn't you hear me out first? I gently closed my eyes. I know what you're going to say, but this time, I want to speak first. Li Muxiao, let's get divorced. He squeezed my hand, his grip tightening, causing pain. Are you messing with me? Who gave you the right to suggest divorce first? What? Have you already found a new partner? Or have you made enough money with me? Mutual benefit? Fine, but I haven't had enough yet. Li Muxiao's voice was dripping with sarcasm. I quickly realized he had overheard my conversation with Xiao He, but I couldn't understand why he was so angry. If he had used a little bit of his brain, he would have known that I wasn't sincere. But he chose to explode like this, just finding an excuse. What did I gain? Fame, fortune, or money? Oh, I gained a few words of perfunctory and teasing from you. And that night, let's just say I was wrong, it was my lustful desires. Can I apologize to you? Shut up. Li Muxiao gritted his teeth, interrupting me, his eyes red as if he wanted to devour me. What do you want in the end? Why did you do this and why have you never said anything? What do you take me for and have you ever believed in me? After this hysterical outburst, I finally understood that that night was a thorn in Li Muxiao's heart. He was unhappy about being manipulated by me, uneasy about my intentions, and unwilling to be a loser captured by desire. So he had been secretly playing games with me, seeing who would reveal their cards first. In this process, did he have some genuine feelings, and 
Did he ever think about going to the end with me? I didn't want to explore the answers anymore. It was just ridiculous how our marriage, so inexplicable, ended so farcically and especially briefly. You're so smart. How could you not know what I want? You deliberately avoided the most likely reason because you hate burdens. Li Muxiao's expression changed several times. His eyes suddenly lit up. Do you mean you have feelings for me? I broke free from his grasp and, seeing a speeding car coming, almost reflexively turned around and ran towards him. Watch out. In the screeching of brakes, Li Muxiao hugged me and rolled several times. Sticky blood flowed into my eyes and I couldn't tell whose it was. In a daze, I heard him calling out urgently, tinged with heartbreak. When I woke up again, I was lying in a hospital bed. Besides a sprained right arm in a brace, the rest of me was unharmed. On the bed next to me lay Li Muxiao, staring at me dumbfounded, with a thick bandage wrapped around his head. Could he have been hit so hard that he became dumbfounded? Do you still recognize me? I do, my wife, the one who risked her life to save me. Li Muxiao's voice was hoarse, but surprisingly gentle. If it were in the past, being called like that by him would probably have felt very sweet. Now, however, there was only a faint sense of melancholy. A car accident inadvertently shattered my cowardice and anxiety, giving me the opportunity to re-examine life and the future. It was time to step out of the winter night when I was 20. Perhaps without Li Muxiao, I could still live well. Even if I couldn't let go of him now, someday I would be able to forget slowly. Unexpectedly, Li Muxiao was completely opposite to me. He started to care for me and was even considerate, bordering on eager. Refusing the senior ward arranged by Li's father, he stayed in my double room. Despite being more seriously injured than me, he insisted on using his hands, every day helping me wash my face, feed me, and even telling me many jokes because he felt I wasn't laughing much anymore. Besides the physical pain, I didn't know how to face him more than anything else. Without the halo of love that I had bestowed upon him, he was just a clumsy and dull, ordinary man. I couldn't find the same heart-pounding feeling I used to have just by silently watching him. Even when Li Muxiao explained to me immediately after I woke up why he had spoken to Chen Shi that way. I was afraid Shinny Ran would target you even more, and with Mrs. Li's identity, she could easily erase all the efforts you've made at work. I chose to believe him and understand his intentions, but everything couldn't go back to the way it was. Li Muxiao also noticed, speaking and acting cautiously, often looking at my expression, and occasionally sighing restlessly in the middle of the night. Such restraint was very unlike him, and it made me feel uncomfortable. After thinking it over, I decided to talk to him. Mr. Lee, I was injured for a reason, so you don't need to feel guilty, let alone make any compensation. After we're discharged from the hospital, let's get divorced and return to the relationship between boss and employee, making it easier for both of us. Li Muxiao's hand, peeling an apple, stopped abruptly, cutting his finger. He grabbed a tissue and pressed it, throwing the bloody apple into the trash. Sorry, let me peel you another one. I'm not guilty, I just want to treat you well. As for divorce, I disagree. I turned my eyes away, seeing the blood slowly seeping through the paper from his injured finger, glaring red and striking, I turned over. Don't bother peeling it, I don't want to eat. Okay, tell me when you want to eat. Li Muxiao put down the apple. Just as I put my phone by the bedside, it rang suddenly. He picked it up and handed it to my ear. I didn't know which finger touched the speakerphone button, amplifying the playful voice of a woman, echoing throughout the ward. Wan Qingji, it's Qin Shi. You've changed so much over the years that I almost didn't recognize you, but your look at Li Muxiao is still the same as before, eager and humble. I sat up in shock, but Li Muxiao covered my mouth with one hand, the smell of blood rushing into my nostrils, making me stop struggling. Do you like him so much? In college, you secretly pretended to be a friend on the platform to chat with him, and when he mistook you for me, you didn't blame him. You went through all sorts of difficulties to join his company and willingly became his unclear plaything. It's really touching. But as I said back then, don't daydream, he won't like you. Li Muxiao coldly interrupted her. Director Chen, Wan Qingji is my wife. You have no right to meddle in her affairs. 
Also, tell Shin Iran, the collaboration is off. After the call ended, I was released, but my forehead was covered in cold sweat. Li Muxiao's dry palm held me down. He looked shocked and bewildered, mechanically stroking my hand. It took him a while to come to his senses, and he looked at me with deep, warm eyes. I quickly pulled the blanket over my head. Please, don't ask anything. Okay. Until I was discharged from the hospital, Li Muxiao never mentioned the incident again, and according to my request, he sent me back to my rented house. The once familiar and warm home seemed empty and desolate for the first time without Li Muxiao's presence. It's easy to go from frugality to luxury, but difficult to go from luxury to frugality. After packing my luggage and taking a hot shower, I saw a WeChat message from Li Muxiao on my phone. He reminded me not to lift heavy objects, to take medicine on time, and to rest properly. When I asked him when we would proceed with the divorce, he didn't reply. Before going to bed that night, several private messages suddenly appeared on my social media account, with Li Muxiao's profile picture lighting up after many years, making me feel like I had traveled back to another world. Not long after I got together with Chen Shi, I realized that she wasn't you. But I thought it was a scheme between you two to deceive me, or that you didn't really want to see me, so I let her take your place. I never logged into this account again, and later, we broke up. It took me a long time tonight to find the account and password again, and then, I saw your Mercury Diary. I can't put into words the shock I felt at that moment, as if I had never imagined that someone could love me so deeply and continuously. I'm sorry, Ruan Ruan, for letting you go through so many lonely times all by yourself. But in reality, I shamelessly felt a sense of joy. Li Muxiao didn't finish his message, and I didn't want to dwell on its meaning. I quickly replied to him, You don't need to worry about it. The reason I didn't tell you was because I didn't want you to love me just because I love you. Don't worry, the situation you're concerned about won't happen anymore. With vague words, just when I thought he would say something more, his profile picture suddenly grayed out. Feeling a sense of powerlessness, I didn't bother to investigate further and closed my eyes, drifting off to sleep until dawn. The next morning, as soon as I stepped out, I saw Li Muxiao waiting downstairs. Leaning against the car, he was looking at his phone. When he saw me, he flashed a big smile. Mrs. Li, please get in the car. From now on, Xiao Li will be at your service as the driver. I stood frozen in place, somewhat puzzled, as I watched him walk over and take my backpack off my shoulders. I actually have a lot to say, but in the end, I decided not to. Because actions speak louder than words, and they demonstrate my sincerity more effectively. Li Muxiao was a highly efficient doer and very patient. He took the initiative to pick me up and drop me off at work, regardless of the weather or how busy he was. After a few unsuccessful protests from me, I went along with him. Occasionally, I would deliberately linger and wait for him to finish his tasks. A couple of times when we had some extra time, I allowed him to come in for a cup of tea, but he always left shortly after sitting down and never mentioned me moving back in. Of course, he didn't bring up the topic of divorce either, and it didn't seem like he was planning to agree to it. I knew he was giving me time and waiting for me to give him another chance. Although I wasn't completely hesitant, whenever I recalled his cold demeanor in the past, I couldn't help but hesitate again. Li Muxiao also noticed this and confessed, Wan Ruan, I am pursuing you seriously. It has nothing to do with the past, and I never intended to use our existing marital relationship to pressure you. So you don't have to worry or rush. I'm waiting for you. His words were like a reassurance that made me feel much more at ease. Later, I gradually noticed some details that I hadn't paid attention to when my emotions were tense before. Driving me to and from work, sending morning and evening messages every day, four dates a week, taking walks in the park after dinner, buying small potted plants at the flower market, watching movies in the evening, and camping in the suburbs near the city. Li Muxiao progressed gradually, constantly inviting me, and each serious gesture he made was a manifestation of my aspirations, written in the Mercury Diary. After many years, he finally fulfilled every one of them with me by his side. As I tearfully felt both bitter and fulfilled, I had to admit to myself that I still loved him. Now that I understood, there was no need to hesitate anymore. 
I planned to find a time to talk to him and make things clear. But as the end of the year approached, Li Muxiao became busier, and I didn't know what he was up to privately. He disappeared for several days. I was somewhat annoyed by this, even lacking enthusiasm for the company's year-end party. When I saw Li Muxiao, I glared at him fiercely. However, he just smiled at me and, unusually, hosted the year-end party, even participating in the final raffle. It wasn't until he loudly called out my name that I was surprised he still remembered the joke from before, and he actually gave me the first prize. When I received the prize from him, I heard him say it was handmade by him, exclusively for me. This surprised me and made me feel touched, so I avoided the crowd, opened it solemnly, and was instantly struck in the heart. It was a small ornament, about the size of two palms, with a miniature Milky Way suspended on a crystal base, the planets shimmering and rotating around each other. Only the tiny Mercury crossed light years and orbits, nestled beside the sun, moving side by side. Li Muxiao had somehow come up behind me at some point, his eyes reddened, and he reached out to me. Wan Wan, I'm giving you my Milky Way, promising you'll never rotate alone in this lifetime. Do you believe me? I nodded vigorously, throwing myself into his arms, carefully holding the heavy gift, tears streaming silently. This was the dream I had been infatuated with for many years, and also the son I had been looking up to for many years. Now it was finally in the palm of my hand.